Ladies and gentlemen, today I think we'll have a rest from the serious political commentary. It's Friday. Let's all have a, a nice, easygoing, pleasant story about how in these great secular times we live in, we've got rid of all these petty racist stereotypes and now we've educated all the white people. Everyone is more than happy to date, marry and yes, love people from any background. So if you didn't see this story, <laughs> I mean, why would you? Why would you? Sensible people are busy reading about things that actually matter. But like I said, it's a Friday and, and frankly, I fancied a day off. You know, you can only read about so many thousand dinghy divers before you were uh, apoplectic with rage and give yourself a stroke. So the bootneck needed a day off. <laughs> the piece I'm talking about is obviously uh, this story from The Independent. Uh, John Boyega reveals he will only date black as he opens up about his love life. The funny thing about that is, like I said in, in the intro, it's been painted as a problem whereby, well, every time anyone, whether it's Kahindi Andrews at Birmingham University, you've all heard of him, right? Somehow made it to be a professor, <laughs> despite having the IQ of a pair of flip-flops. Uh, although it is in Birmingham, and having been to Birmingham, uh, I can categorically state it only has two redeeming qualities. One, it's a testament and it's living evidence of the dangers of inviting tens of thousands of unvetted third world men into your country. Uh, and second of all, and this is its number, this is its main plus point for me, Birmingham is the only city in Britain that the people of Middlesbrough can point at and say, I'm glad I don't live there. Middlesbrough's used to being the bottom rung. Finally, we have somewhere that we too can pour scorn on. We've also got the likes of Ibram X. Kendi or Damona, the LA Times here in California, the LA Times legendary agony aunt answering questions like this. Dear Damona, is it racist if I don't want to date outside my own race? I'm going to call this. I think Damona is going to say the obvious. Damona said, I've contemplated the relationship between race and romance and coached my clients to be race open when they date because it expands our view of the world and increases your odds of meeting someone special. Does it though? Increases your odds of meeting someone special? Uh, if I'm completely unable to communicate with my date, <laughs> other than via the medium of grunts and obscene hand gestures, <laughs> I don't think that relationship's going to go anywhere. Also, you have things in common with people from your own culture. I don't want to go limbo dancing or roast a goat in a fire pit on my front garden in the northeast of England. So I don't agree, Damona. I also suspect she was only thinking of one particular ethnicity when she was telling everybody how racist it is to stay within your ethnic group. In my work, I've identified two primary factors that affect our dating preferences, physical attraction and familiarity. We are attracted to the image of beauty that is currently being marketed to us. And unfortunately for people of colour and Rubenesque women, historically most models in fashion magazines have been white and wayfish. Currently being marketed to us. Demona, go outside. Go and look at the billboards with the morbidly obese howling women currently adorning Times Square and get back to me. <clears throat> Slim, attractive, physically fit people have been marketed to us since marketing was invented. And it's not marketing, it's human evolution. It's biology. The reason slim, athletic looking people are appealing to us is because those selfish genes, on a primal level, we are seeking a partner that is healthy. It's almost unconscious. You want to pass your genes on to a healthy partner. That's why when someone is morbidly obese or so skinny when you're back scuttling them, it feels like you're stood behind a racing greyhound. Um, <laughs> you can count every rib. It's not appealing to people. It doesn't look healthy. We like people to look athletic because we like them to look healthy. It's the same with pallid skin, bad teeth. If you've got teeth like a witch doctor's necklace and yellow skin, 
a green tinge that makes you look as if you've just been on the roller coaster eight times in a row after 15 pints of Guinness and then proceeded to balk the entire contents of your stomach over a large group of children in the queue. It looks unhealthy. If you look unhealthy, something in deep rooted in your brain does not like it. That's why people don't like going out with big fat knackers because they look bloated. They look ill. It's unnatural. These are the type of people who say everything is a social construct. You play football against them, your goal is a social construct. It's nonsense. Some things are socially constructed, and of course we do get programmed to some degree by our entertainment and what's around us. But dating and sexuality is unarguably linked to our long evolutionary process. We like our partners to look healthy because we want our children to be healthy. Also, why does it say unfortunately for people of colour? What you're trying to say, are they, are they predisposed to eating Battenberg? They don't like going for a walk? What are you trying to say, Demona? You sound a bit prejudiced. Here's another good one. Yes, sexual preferences based on race are still racist. Yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to have a type. You're not allowed to have a type. In the same way that a lesbian woman not wanting to go down on a sailor's big, hairy, gnarled penis, um, if the sailor identifies as female. Because <laughs> that's obviously a fetish by some strange men who, um, who really get off on the idea of sleeping with a lesbian that's never actually been with a bloke before. Apparently, in 2022, this crazy, crazy world we're living in, if you're a lesbian and you don't want to go out with a woman, a woman that happens to have a very, very sizable, particularly dangly seven to nine inch uh, clitoris, uh, apparently then you're, you're being a bigot as well. This piece continues, so you have a preference for partners of a certain race to the exclusion of others. Do these sentiments make you a racist? The evidence is compounding and may now be fairly conclusive that sexual racism is a form of racism and therefore indefensible by claims of preference. Well, uh, I'll stop you there then, son, shall I? I'll stop you there because lo and behold, what I woke up to today. John Boyega reveals he will only date black as he opens up about his love life. He said he only dates black and then it's about chemistry and personality and goals. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll just point you at those last two very liberal publications, John. Uh, and I'm sorry to inform you that now you basically want to put white people in the gas chambers. Don't, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules, mate. You're going to have to give up acting and man the machine gun nest on a walk death camp. <laughs> it's like Auschwitz, but it's got better interior decorating. Uh, uh, one of those gay icons from San Francisco is going to take care of the wallpapering in the cells. There's not really much to say about it other than, it, other than it, obviously it's extremely funny. Um, and I will make that point to anybody watching this and taking it not in the spirit that it's intended. I keep telling you a lot. Every aspect of this new walk commie ideology is about coaxing and encouraging bitterness and resentment because it's only by making people at loggerheads constantly angry with each other that you usher in the glorious, well, not so glorious because everybody dies, the glorious revolution. So this type of stuff shouldn't make you angry. It should make you laugh. It should make you chuckle at how ludicrous and hypocritical they are rather than rising to the bait and, you know, shaving your head, getting some silly tattoos, and then driving a transit van through a kebab shop. <laughs> That's not a wise idea. And just to point out how, hypocriti how hypocritical it is, if you haven't seen this already, judging by the thousands of stories about how racist it is for white people to have a sexual preference, um, it's the same in entertainment, again, because it's all part of the plan. They are purposely trying to make you angry. It's why they're so hypocritical. Hypocrisy drives people wild. It does make you angry and you have to rise above it and be the bigger man. Hollywood's a great example. They race swap everybody now. They refuse to write any original characters. They just do it because they know it annoys fans of the established stories. Just as an example, Look at some of the famous comic and kid story characters of late. Mary Jane is meant to be a Jinnock. 
And she doesn't look very ginger there, does she? Heimdall, yeah. He's a Norse god. He's a Norse god. And they cast Idris Elba. I mean, casting that bad has to be on purpose. It's like making a movie about Kate Moss and getting fucking Roseanne Barr to play her. <laughs> it's, just, it's the exact opposite of the truth. Although not Roseanne Barr. We, we could do a race swap as well. Diane Abacus, the morbidly obese oxygen thief, still eating all the sausage rolls in the parliamentary snack bar. Annie the Orphan, she's a ginner. Well, not anymore. Now she looks like uh, Whoopi Goldberg when she was a bird. <laughs> Hawk Girl, yep, yeah, they've done her as well. Jimmy Olsen, I mean, there's another beauty. Jimmy Olsen, one of the most legendary ginners from the comics. Now he's a bald black man. He looks like Morpheus from The Matrix. <laughs> they did the same with Wesker from <laughs> uh, the new Resident Evil series. He's a scandy looking white dude with slick back hair. They made him look like Blade. Uh, the Critical Drinker pointed that out and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Electro is a black man now. <laughs> Starfire. Starfire, she's got like a five foot mass of glorious orange locks. Well, not anymore. Now she looks like the bird out the end, people. Uh, Triss, she's a ginner. No, no, she's not. She's Now she's a bit Iraqi looking. And the f most famous recent one is Ariel, the Little Mermaid. Written by one of the most famous European authors and now transformed into... Well, you've all seen it. There's no point talking about it anymore. What I will say is, though, that particular group of people isn't particularly good at swimming, are they? Have you seen how many ethnic people Tarzan can drown in the river? Hundreds of them. They're all trying to kill him and he's just like, whoosh, whoosh. See you later, lads. I'm just saying, they haven't won too many gold medals in the Olympic swimming pool, have they? So thanks for that, John. I enjoyed reading that. It gave me a right old chuckle. Remember, ladies and gents, it should make you laugh. If it doesn't make you laugh, you're doing modern politics wrong. It is clown world after all. Um, sorry for the lack of streams this week. I've been working like a Baghdad bricklayer. I'll try and get some done next week, but I'm not even in town. For the, I'm not in, around for the weekend because I'm going to see my mother-in-law for a birthday. Um, so there is that. Have a good weekend. Have a good drink. And I'll see you all on Monday. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.